Oh, hi there. Welcome back to the Agostino Zinger Show with me, your host, Agostino Zinger. This is episode number 229. Dos, dos, nuevo. Hope you guys are doing well. Hydrated and chilled with that malarkey. You're where you need to be. Um, you are going where you need to be. You're striving to get to where you need to be and all that good, good, good. How are you guys? Thank you for asking how I am. I'm doing amazing. I'm doing great. I've just come back from the gym. I went and did a really good workout, five sets of like, you know, overhead presses, deadlifts, back squats. Then I went on a row machine, smashed that out for like three rounds, 250 meter row, 10 kettlebell swings, 10 push ups. And now here I'm back home um, with a couple of eggs in my stomach and just feeling, you know, feeling good, feeling ready to go and feeling like I'm um, feeling like a million bucks, actually, for for once in my life, um, which has been quite nice. I've been trying to keep myself uh, fairly um, active or fairly disciplined in terms of my um, regimen of what I'm eating, what I'm not having and all that sort of stuff um, in the run up to my big, big, you know, uh, pilgrimage to Bel Berlin, Ber Ber Belgium, to, to Berlin, to the Bergheim um, later on this month or at the end, at the beginning of October. So I'm just trying to keep myself, you know, really clean, really lean. So when I get there, I'm at my top and optimal level of performance to go and smash it there for as long as I can, standing up, pumping my fist in the air and waving it around like I just don't care, you know? Um, apart from that, what else have I been up to? Uh, oh, shit. So the other day on Saturday, I went and DJed at this bar in Dawson called The King's Head. So big up uh, Natalia for inviting me. That was a very nice of her to invite me down there. But... um. It was an interesting gig. Very, very interesting gig. I've got to say that. Very, very interesting gig. Um, it really did remind me of... Um, you know, you have those gigs, right? Where you kind of get reminded of your level. You kind of get reminded of like where you are in the kind of, you know, overall DJing pecking order. That was one of them, right? Because number one, you know, when you get called in to like cover these such events, it's, you know, usually last minute or come because, you know, you're the last person they probably think about. So, you know, you, you've got to take that... Um, dent to the ego and then secondly when you have to play for a crowd that necessarily you're not very that attuned with or you don't you're not very used to playing in front of you haven't been to any of the parties and stuff it gets really difficult and i guess this kind of goes back to what a lot of djs would say i think i've listened to a lot of seth truxler interviews lately um or him talking at you know um the ib for music summit some uh red bull uh, is that Red Bull? Yeah, Red, Red, those Red Bull Masterclass sort of things. Um, Seth Trockers has been talking about um, in the past, you know, a few years ago. He doesn't do as many of them this this time around, probably because he's so busy. But he mentioned quite a few times about just being active in the scene, right? That's how you get involved in music, like just, just going out. And I think and that's what I love about DJ, what I love about club culture. It still hasn't, you can't really replicate it on the internet in that regard, right? It hasn't really been done in a good way. Um, or even in a way that makes any sort of sense, you still have to kind of go outside for the most part and talk to people and, you know, connect to people and make friends and stuff. And then, you know, um, little by little, um, you start to touch base with people. You might end up making your own label, uh, start your own brand, uh, start your own club night, open your own bar, open your own nightclub. It just, it, it all starts from the dance floor usually. And yeah? those, those are some, some of the best conversations you have. And sometimes on the way home, um, you know, in the toilets, like you have some of the best conversations that you like, and some of the stuff that really opens your eyes to, to what you kind of want to do in the future or the stuff that you don't want to do, right? It's all, it's all a good testing ground. But the, mo the most important thing about it is to go out and really experience these events, right? Go out and club, go out and have a good time. Listen to what the DJ is playing. Don't stand in Shazam stuff. Just listen, just feel the vibe, right? It's just like understand what's kind of going on, how they're taking them on a journey. And you can really start to differentiate between, you know, objectively what is a good DJ and what is a bad DJ, right? The one that's able to kind of read the crowd and take them on a journey up and down, peaks and valleys, whatever lucky. So with that being said, when I went to go DJ at the King's Head to kind of go and cover, I was very aware that I was not. I was very aware that I wasn't very I, I wasn't very aware of what those people wanted me to play, right? Because I hadn't been around those kind of clubs, right? And if I'm saying these people, I'm like people that go to nightclubs to listen to specifically Afro beats and hip hop, right? And it's not the fact that they listen to Afro beats hip because I listen to it all the time on my on my own iPhone and stuff when I go and work out and stuff. There's a particular kind of brand of that kind of music that gets played all the time, that's very uninspired, that's a bit flat, um, that, you know, the, you know the kind of sets that they do, it's annoying where they just, they mix the tunes in after a minute and a half, right? They don't let, I don't know, it's just annoying. It's just the same sort of formulaic approach. It's not really interesting. 
So those kind of parties are quite hard to DJ at because, you know, a half an hour set feels like an hour because you probably ran through, I don't know, 50 songs by the time you've played a half an hour set, which is not the way I like to go about things. I like to kind of, you know, long things out, drag things out a little bit, maybe play an instrumental, loop stuff a bit in a little bit, maybe play an acapella. So I wasn't really sure how they respond to it. So I, I packed as much as I could in my USB. I did what I could, but nowadays I don't I don't panic with my USB stick and my playlist. I used to kind of panic a lot and be stressed out and download everything. Now I don't do that. I just download what I can, and if, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But I'm not going to go out there and try, you know, download everything that I need in terms of to play because I end up not playing most of it anywhere. So I end up rocking up to the King's Head, and if you're not familiar with the King's Head, it's this, um, it's this uh, private members club in Dawson, right? And it's a bit weird, right, because, you know, it's not... I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie to you. It's not Shoreditch House, right? I don't think they would, you know, lie to us and say Shoreditch House either. But you know, it's it's a pretty decent place. Um, it's kind of got some really interesting interior design. Um, it's a little bit confusing in that regard because each floor looks completely different from the other one. Um, maybe maybe in the daytime it looks different, but in night I couldn't really tell the difference. I could tell no. Maybe in the daytime you could tell the difference, but at night it just all looks. It all look, you know, like it'd been designed by different people. I don't know if that makes any sense, but um. Yeah, so I rocked up to the to the King's Head in Dawson. I ended up taking a train to um, Dawson King Dawson Junction and walking down. And you know, it was quite I was it didn't quite a good move, right? Mood because I passed by Vig the club for me known as Visions. That was looking like it was popping off. I went past the Haggerston. I went past the Beer and Burger place. Went past um, a few other joints. Forgot what their names are. And you know, those joint people around having a good time. But you could tell the vibe was different. Dawson isn't what it used to be. It wasn't as jumping as it was, you know, in days gone by. You know, it would have been fucking full of people like me just you know chatting shit on the street making noise running around and just acting like a fool but this time around it looked pretty you know pretty tame so i rocked up to the king's head and king's head sort of like this weird little pub thing it's got a door that you can't really open you kind of have to knock on it um i went to go open it and it wouldn't open so then they had to open it from the inside the security guards open it from the inside and then you've kind of got this like you know weird sort of like taxidermy stuff all over it you kind of go in, give your name to the receptionist. If it's not in there, they probably just, you know, you note it down on the sheet and then you kind of go up and play. Um, and I get in there and um, well, let's maybe talk more about the club, right? So this is the, this is the club itself. It's on the screen now. I'm going to put it on the screen for you guys to see. But it's called The King's Head. Um, it's a Flash website. Of course, it's a Flash website. It's not really looking that great. Oh, my God. What the hell is this? This site is horrendous. It's a flash of it and I can't see how much it is or the price or anything. Okay, cool. What's on? Anything? Okay, there we go. We've got something there. So this is basically essentially what they have on, right? The kind of parties, right? They have the House of Osiris, Asylum on the 19th. Let's see what the this part is on the 19th. Don't know what kind of music that is, but 21 and over, Black Moses. So they have club nights on there so that you can go to and have a good time in. But for the most part, it's a private members club. I think... It's three fifty the membership or something that you pay, but I gotta be honest, man. The clientele that on the Saturday were, you know, it wasn't the best. It was kind of full of quite of a lot of people that I wouldn't want to spend any more time with outside of the time that I was there. Um, again, not not their fault because a lot of it was there's a lot of like private there was a lot of like private fashion week after parties happening at the, at the spot. Um, really playing the same old music again and again and again. Uh, but you know what can you do? Um. That is the King's Head, right? Private Members Club in Shore, uh, more so in Dawson. I'm not I wouldn't really say Shoreditch, but you know they got they got to do what they have to do in that regard. But um, let's see how much. I think it's like three fifty the King's Head prices. King's Head membership, Members Club. Let's see how much they got the price on here. Price. Uh, cool membership is there, yeah. So here's a membership. Um. So as you can see from the screen, the price, the membership price, and this is from 2018, I'm assuming it's the same this for this time, for under 28, for under 27, sorry, it's 200 quid, and an annual membership uh, for adults is 325, which is not too bad, right? You've got a monthly membership to request. So I guess if you're that way inclined, right, or you want to go, because I've, I've mentioned before previously on the podcast that I, want, I wouldn't mind actually being part of a private members club just because, you know, you kind of lack places to go to um, and just hang out, right, with your friends, just grab a drink and chat a bit of shit. Um, that's a bit a bit of a nicer venue than maybe Weatherspoons or than maybe a, a cool cocktail bar. Maybe it opens a bit later than a cool cocktail bar, right? So you want something in the middle of that. Um, and that, and you prepare a club kind of allow you to do so. Now you have to justify that kind of money and, you know, 
Three fifty is three fifty is not a lot. I guess the Ace the Shoreditch house is probably a lot more money. Like you know, having to pay like a grand something to just justify spending that much money, you have to kind of go out a lot. But three fifty is not too bad. I wouldn't mind doing it. And again, what time does it close? It closes at um yeah five a.m. on a Friday and a Saturday, and four a.m. on a Thursday. So it's it's perfectly fine. You can perfectly do that and have a good time. And you know, and since Dawson. You can get home pretty easily for the most part. Um, but yeah, anyway, um, that being said, I got inside. I couldn't find where I was meant to DJ because obviously I've been told to I've been told to help out cover with Natalia. And I've, I'm assuming she hadn't told the birthday girl, you know, that kind of poor communication stuff. And again, she, you know, what's she going to do? Call her up and tell some random guy that he's going to play. It just would have made it awful. But just got a bit got a bit dicey. So I, got, I get in there. The main bar is pretty nice. It's got like a U-shaped bar, which is quite cool with tables on the side i think i like the main floor bar the best it's kind of got a good vibe in it but again it was full of a lot of like fashion week kind of you know pretentious people in there that were you know a bit stuck up but you know what can you do they are who they are so i, I did my best to kind of avoid eye contact and not kind of talk to them and then i went to the bit where the, the cloakroom was asked her where the dj booth was right around the corner went around the corner so a dj booth and i bumped into a friend said hi i couldn't find my my my, my dj gig place finally said oh check upstairs went upstairs to the first floor and I went to go check if that was the room I meant to play in, right? So as I'm about to approach the door, security goes, hey, hey, hey. security goes, hey, you can't go in there. I was like, why? I was surprised. I was okay, cool. Well, I think I might be DJing here um, for this um, girl that's, you know, meant to be a birthday party. He's like, oh, what's her name? It's like, I don't know, right? So already, you're starting already this fucking circle of bullshit, right? Because again, I, I guess I, I assumed when I went in there, it would be one bar. So I'd know exactly who, I mean, it'd just be like that. There's only one DJ booth. That's where I'm playing. But I guess the fact that it's three floors made it difficult. So security guard's cool. He's like, okay, cool. No worries. Give me as much info as you can. And I'll go over to the girl and find out what's going on. He goes up to the girl and says, oh, yeah, there's a guy here. Meant to say, he's meant to be DJ. I think he talks to her. The girl comes over and she's immediately got that kind of like, you know, ridiculous, like she's got that annoying pissed off face already straight away. Right. She hasn't seen me. I haven't spoken to her. I've just come up. I'm more dressed up like I'm at DJ. I'm not wearing like shitty clothes. I've made the effort to kind of look a bit smart. Right. She immediately comes up to the door. She's already got that kind of scrunched her face. Like, ah. Oh. Well, we all set for DJs, actually. We're all right. It's like, motherfucker, I'm not asking to DJ at your party randomly. I didn't just come here. I'm, I'm, uh, and I was like, Ugh. I had to kind of just ignore the kind of, you know, frostiness in the beginning. I was like, look, um, yeah, I know I'm not I'm not coming on the whim to come to DJ at a party. I was, I was seeing whether or not I was told to come here. Are you the first? Are you having the first party? It's like, no. I was like, okay, do you know this girl? I just showed a text message. And the tell was like, no, no, no. I said, that's not it. Maybe it's somewhere else. Then she kind of calmed down a bit because she realized, you know, I wasn't there to kind of, you know, hood, try to jump on her wave. But just thinking, imagine being that person. Imagine just being immediately like standoffish. I get it. Maybe, no, I get it. Maybe that place in general day to day is full of wankers, right? And she's always had to kind of put up with somebody coming in saying, oh, can I come? Like, it's just, it's a no, I get it. It must be annoying. But relax, man. Relax, relax, relax. At least give me, at least give me the opportunity of being a wanker before you immediately just start being frosty straight away. But anyway, she was frosty. She calmed down a bit. She was nice and... Then the security guard kind of helped me. I said, hey, go upstairs and check, right? So I'll go to the second floor. Go to the second floor. It's even weirder. So even full of more taxidermy. And it's a tiny, tiny room. And it's full of like, I don't know, six or seven people. That are clubs obviously dressed up for some sort of private party. It's obviously not there. The, the, there's a nice girl in there too. A nice girl, considering the other one was completely, you know, a bit of a bitch. But this one was much nicer. And she was like, oh, don't worry. Um, let me help you out. She steps out of the room. She's like, oh, where is it? Would you know? She's like, oh, and then she's like, oh, actually, no. I know where it is. It's definitely in the basement. I'm like, there's a fucking basement. She's like, yeah, yeah, there's a basement downstairs. Like, okay, cool. So I went all the way back down again where I was on the ground floor. Went down to the basement. And the basement's not easy to find. This is all the king's head. It's sort of like near the DJ booth. So it's a bit, you know, the bit, you know, when you're in a, in the, you know, when you go to a rave and you go to a nightclub, the only place you don't want to be at, especially in a place that you're uncomfortable at, is near the DJ booth, right? Because that's where all the cool hips of people are. That's where everyone, was, you know, it's just a bit weird. So I went to, back to the near the booth again, and it's a little secret door to the right. I had to turn into the right, and you get to the DJ booth. You go downstairs to the basement. I went down to the basement, and the good thing about that place is that it sound insulated really well. You can't hear anything in the other kind of floors. Like, honestly, I didn't, I didn't hear, I didn't, I couldn't even hear there was a basement. You couldn't hear anything. Going downstairs to the basement, and it's this weird sort of like strip club thing, looking wise. I don't know if it was like a strip club or like a really tacky Soho nightclub. Um, it's essentially like a big, massive black pit um, with, and then on the edges are seats, quote unquote seats. And then on the top, there's a DJ booth. Um, and then the, there's a balcony on top of that with another amount of seats. Seats everywhere. The most seats I've seen in my life in a nightclub. And again, I think because I'm so used to going to techno parties, having a good time there. I've never really, 
Yeah, clubs I used to go to techno parties. I've never really seen the need to have a seats everywhere in the club, right? So when you go to those kind of clubs, it's like a bit of a throwback. Like, oh shit, I remember that's where we used to be, right? When we used to go to Marketplace, when we used to go to, oh, I forgot the one in Soho, but there's a few others that we used to go to where the, the game was to kind of see how long you could stand up on the chair for, act a fool, get the girls to look at you, and then the security guy tell you to jump. I mean, it's that kind of to and fro game. So I remember that. So I'm in there and I'm like, okay, cool. And the crowd, of course, is nothing like any crowd I've kind of played in front of. It's full of loads of like really, you know, hot um, girls wearing those kind of like, you know, um, tighty dresses on, you know, those slinky dresses that don't hide anything. Um, loads of guys with like really expensive watches and belts. So I'm like, oh my God, how am I going to, how am I going to play in here? man? like, again, it's not my kind of place. I'm not a snob. I'm not, it's not like it's underneath me, but I also don't want anyone to have a bad time, right? I don't want to ruin their night because they obviously, this is obviously their thing, right? This is what they do. They go out to these kind of parties. And I just don't want to be the DJ that comes on there. Is is a bit is a bit annoyed he's there and just starts fucking done in the dance, right? Dead in the dance, like clearing the dance. Floor. I don't want to be that dude. I want to allow and I want to kind of let them have a good time too. I want to I want to aid in the good times. So eventually, um, I kind of, you know, I kind of get over myself and I figure out, okay, cool, what was the best thing to do? And I'm just staring around thinking, wow, wow, we've got to play. And as DJ is playing, he's playing everything I have, all the songs that I downloaded, he's playing every single one, he's fucking smashing it um in his eyes or in that in their eyes it wasn't you know that much of an inspired set in my regard but you know for what they for that standard he's playing quite cool and then natalia brings up a great idea she's like look let's just play back to back so we end up playing back to back and it works out pretty well i end up having loads of like newer stuff um and she ended up having a load of cl- old school classics and then we end up going back to back and just like smashed it really all the way through and it worked out pretty well in the end right in the end we i think we did a good job but it just made me wonder, number one, why the girl even bothered getting us in, right? I think if you're having a birthday party and you're doing that kind of thing, that kind of music, why not just get the best of the best that kill it in that kind of scene? There's no need to bring us in. If you are going to bring people like me in, you might as well get me to play other stuff, right? Because the moment I played Candy, everyone went crazy, right? It was as a good vibe. But I think, yeah, like, why would you get us to play if if I would... I would much rather... It would probably make more sense if she got us to play like a disco set, a house set, right an indie set i don't know a disc a funk set that'll make more sense right than us to try and compete with people who play that kind of music week in week out i guess that's kind of what i'm get, trying to say so again it was uh not the best of sets not the most enjoyable but also a learning experience also a humbling experience and also an experience that kind of let me see that okay i've i've matured a lot because i'm not i'm not going in there with an ego i'm not going in there like you know oh, i'm better than this i'm going in there like you know i'm of service even if it's something I don't want to do, I'll try my best to do it. But it's also got me thinking a little bit, tiny bit, like sometimes saying yes to everything isn't a good idea, right? Because it's not really worth your time to go, you know, imagine if I went there and embarrassed myself and did a really piss poor job, right? You, That's the only impression you could ever make on someone. And that's, that's the impression they have on you now, right? Even if I play in other genres really well, they might just think you've always been shit. So yeah, interesting experience. I won't do it again. I don't think so um i probably will avoid it or if i can what i will do i think going forward is maybe practice um to put together like a 30 minute set of that kind of music right and just smash it in my head just have like a killer 30 to 40 minute hip-hop set that i know will just wreck any dance right that would probably 30 to 50 minute set that's what i probably i think something i might end up doing just having your back pocket it's always handy to have your back pocket right i think every dj should have an, an hour of each genre that they can actually just go to and just like doom, 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 sling it out and absolutely destroy it. I think so. Um, and then the other things you can just freestyle with. But yeah, interesting set at the King's Head. Again, not my kind of private members club, but again, 350 for the year or 325 for the year, I think is a pretty good deal, but I'm just not sure of the clientele, man, if I want to be in that kind of place, you know? It's a bit, bit sketch, but you know, what can you do? Anyway, um, next on the list here, let's move on because we've got a, get going and stuff malarkey we've got a lot to talk about um oh bergheim lineup bergheim lineup as you guys are aware i'm going to the bergheim at the beginning of october and i can't wait i can't wait i can't wait i can't wait actually you know what let me close this window a little bit so i don't get any extra background noise in it wait one second Okay, and we are back. Back, 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 back. Let's get this camera nice and tight. Let's make sure everything's looking good. Okay, cool, we're back. So I'm going Burger in the beginning of October. I'm going from the 
third. Is it the third? All right. Let's see, let's see the dates here. I'm gonna book. I've already booked my outgoing. I haven't booked my return yet. So I'm gonna go on the fourth to the. Well, yeah, I'm gonna to go to the fourth to the seventh. But I think I might leave here. I might leave London after work on a Thursday just to get that extra kind of day in because you know it's Berlin. The club's gonna be open until six a.m. anyway, so I might as well just go out. I might just go out all the way through, just kind of stay out, right? Sleep on a sleep on the uh, sleep on a plane, get into Berlin, put my bag down the Airbnb, have a shower, and then head straight out again. Um, so there's loads of events that I kind of want to go to that I've kind of scheduled in my kind of Berlin calendar. So if you're listening and you're from Berlin, you want to hang out, get in touch, get in touch, leave a comment below and let me know if you're in town and we can do the damn thing. But the plan is to go to the Bergheim, really. That's my main plan. I'm probably going to go there on the Sunday or the Saturday, probably. Saturday, yeah, Saturday morning, maybe. Saturday morning, um, all the way through to Monday. That's probably the, the thing I'm going to try and do. My that's the hard. The thing I'm going to try and do the hardest. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Um, but yeah, going Bergheim, man. Can't wait. I can't fucking wait. So finally, they released the lineup. They don't put the lineup out too early in advance. I'm sure. Maybe it's like a month. Is it 17? I don't know. They don't put them out too early in advance. They have like a rough schedule of the lineups they're gonna have for um the kind of gig place, the Swa the Sole. I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but all the all the, like the club night events and stuff, the club nights events and stuff, they don't usually put them out ahead of time, but this time they did. Um, finally, I've got the list on here, so I can kind of show you guys. So this is me in October. So for October, I have the be the benefit or the beauty of seeing, number one, it's going to be uh, in the, the main store place. I can maybe see, oh, on the Thursday, that's amazing. I can maybe see um, VTTS playing, She's really good. I'm not sure about other people. I haven't really heard them of them previously. Then on the Friday, I've got to get penalized um, with uh, Fumia Tanaka, Margaret Degas, uh, Sammy D, Zip, so the whole Perlong gang. And then on Saturday to Monday, we have the main event, the main flipping event, right? So this is going to be me in Bergheim on the beginning of October. So if you're jealous, I don't blame you, right? So I've got Running order at the Berghain. I've got Boston 16A, got Ben Clock, Dasha Rush, Developer, Freddie K, Carl Geiger, Leon, and Olin. Panorama Bar, we've got Cormac, uh, IF, Jennifer Cardini, uh, Kitten, um, Crystal Clear, Massimiliano Pellegra, uh, Roxy Moore, and Soundstream. Soundstream, man. Imagine Crystal Clear and Soundstream playing in Panorama Bar. It's going to be so sick, man. I can't wait. Crystal Clear is one of my favorite DJs. Crystal Clear, I've got a funny story about him. I think back in the day, when I first was getting started to DJ, when I was DJing on a fucking controller, that's when I first got DJ controller embarrassment. But Crystal Clear is a fucking good dude, man. I was so embarrassed about using a controller, but that's the only thing I had. I didn't have any other equipment. I had like a really crappy new mark controller and I was playing. I'm going to say, I forgot where it was. It was in a bar somewhere in a shop in Shoreditch. I forgot where it was. I was playing the early set from like six to eight and then Crystal Clear came in and did the eight to 10 set. So I was playing in, in this bar or this this shop in Shoreditch. I forgot it was a store playing. I forgot which one the shop it was. And um, Crystal Clear played after me, right? So imagine that, right? It was like, you're like what the fuck if ever there was a chance for me not to look good right so crystal clear comes after you when you're playing i was like oh no so crystal clear came after me but he was so chill like because i remember before I'd, I'd i'd reading blogs and stuff about how you know corny it was to play on a controller how you weren't a real dj and i was just i just I had a bit of a complex right but he was so nice you could tell he went out of his way not to make me feel like a a loser for using it um, he was kind of complimenting me on the track I played. He was just being a nice dude, right? He stopped over, he played stuff him, and he absolutely destroyed, right? Of course, right? It's fucking crystal clear. So I've always had a bit of a soft spot for him in my heart. You know what I mean? So it's like, that's that's the weird thing about celebrities or the weird thing about entertainers that they probably, this the weird thing that they probably are not aware of, right? All it takes is one interaction, like one interaction, good or bad, for us to kind of, for us civilians to, to frame you in our heads forever, the way we frame you, Right? So if Crystal Clear would have been a dick, I would have forever just had this thing about Crystal Clear on chip my shoulder, right? But the fact that Crystal Clear went out of his head just to be a nice guy, I'm forever going to be nice to him. I'm forever going to love the guy, right? Because he didn't have to be nice, and he was, because he just, you know, he's a good dude. Um, so that would be cool to see him there. Soundstream, again, I'm a big fan of, because I've you know i got loads of his tracks uh, um, that I've clicked over the years, like too many to mention. Um uh, Roxy Moore, I'm a big fan of too, and Kitten as well. Be good, and Jennifer Cardini to be honest. So mostly the Panorama Bar, I'm a big fan of because again, I'm 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 probably if I had to kind of choose 
gun to my head what I would like best to kind of party to it would probably be house so Panama Bar is a more housey vibe as opposed to Bergheim techno but there's something about the Bergheim coming up those stairs and seeing everyone kind of just losing their shit that you just can't help but love right it's just you know it is what it is um standing on the plinths the dark rooms the the fact that you can't fucking see the dj booth right <laughs> it just sometimes when you go into Bergheim it's so full it's so electric in there you can't actually see who's dj you can't see them it's just like full of smoke it's just full of it's just i'm getting goosebumps thinking about it now it's just amazing feeling so I, I honestly cannot wait to go back in there i'm just so looking forward to it so that's me at the beginning of october um for the most part it's going to be in there there might be a few occasions i might pop into um grease Mueller. there might be a few times i might pop into same heads i might pop into about blank i might go to golden gate i might do a little bit of a tour and just kind of pop in here and there because i'm you know I, i'm gonna go on my own so why not just have a good time and just walk around and see what's around or walk around and just pop in places you know i've got no i've got no attachments that's, that's a good thing about going on your own you don't need to kind of wait around for people i'm just gonna go around and chill i'll probably end up smoking loads of cigarettes because that's what ends up happening when you go to berlin i don't ever smoke cigarettes but you go there they've got all these cigarette machines in the nightclubs that you can kind of buy cigarettes from i'm gonna be in there puffing like a fucking idiot um I love it, man. I honestly love that place so, so much. There's no smoke. You can smoke on the dance floor. It's just amazing. I absolutely love it. Um, again, I've, I've always kind of got in when I'm on my own. I've never not got in by myself. So that's going to be, hopefully happens again this time around. I'm not going to count my chickens, but I'm assuming I will. Um, and yeah, Sunday vibes are usually the best, place to, best time to go, right? Sunday is when all the OGs go. You go on Sunday morning and you kind of avoid all the kind of, you know, Taurus and stuff. Saturday, I think Friday and Saturday are the greatest times to go. Because I think Friday's only, Pan Panorama is only open on Friday anyway, right? I'm pretty sure Panorama is only open on Friday. That's when the other night was on I saw here on, on here. Yeah, so Panorama Bar is on the where is it? Yeah, so Panorama Bar is the is a get polarized night. So that should be pretty entertaining as well to check that out for the most part. But yeah, it'll be cool, man, to check out. I can't wait, man. I'm really, I'm really, really and on it to go. Um, I'm really excited. It's gonna be one of the again. I've, I last year I went four times. I went four times in one year last year. So this time I'm not breaking that record, but um, probably not. I'm probably gonna go a second time. Probably gonna go at the end of November again. Fuck it, because you know why not um and then i'm gonna probably just stop and then give it a break until the new year but yeah i love the place man and again it gets me thinking about as to whether or not i should just like sack everything off and not go out in london anymore and just kind of leave that to the wayside right because there's so much fun going out in berlin as composer you just get so spoiled being there isn't it you're just like Ugh. but yeah berlin uh, beginning of october from the third of october i'm there from the third to the seventh. So if you're in, a, so if you're in around Berlin and you live there and you want to hang out, let me know and let's do the damn thing. That'll be fun. That would be fun. Oh, I'm talking about getting um, talking about getting spoiled with uh, the old Berlin. There was a really cool thread that popped up on the techno subreddit, which I recommend. I was, I've seen. I reckon I've told you guys already. Check out beforehand, but definitely check out the techno subreddit if you're you know that way inclined and you like electronic music as much as i do you like going out as much as i do check it out because there's this really cool thread that someone spoke about that kind of got me thinking about myself as well right in that regard um where is it you get spoiled duh, 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 duh. let me see if i can find it it's a really cool thread that someone's speaking about, about getting spoiled but but what is it it's a cool thread. it's like 100 something comments i feel like i should have saved it earlier aye, aye, aye. where are you review where is it? It's not about being spoiled. Nope, it's not there. Maybe second page. See if I can find it. Bear me one second. Ba 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 ba. Yeah, there we go. The burden scene kind of ruined it for me, right? So this is a really cool thread on the subreddit that I think you should really check out. I I think so personally. I think it's a really very very informative and kind of gets at the heart of how hard it is to kind of you know um go to berlin once and ever be the same oh there's an actual oh you know what um have you have you guys seen this this is what i always do all, all the time when i'm ever about to go to Bergheim. i'll go and uh, refresh the berlin location on instagram and see what videos people are posting um to see there's always videos people post in the Bergheim with you know with a sticker on their phone of course just kind of taken in the background noise which is always quite cool um let's see what people have got this time around can you hear that wee 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 you just can't you can't buy that sound and it sounds so much better in there like it sounds amazing through this anyway in general but look at that everyone's saying berlin best party people 
just getting just being excited look at that the black space just amazing isn't it really you can't buy it oh wow look at that look at that ar Bergheim building i wonder how they do that the closing again just just an absolute epic place you can't buy it look at the look at the happy faces in there 28 hours dancing they did i cyber got but yeah so that's that's a cool thing anyway let's go back to the article at, at choice so um, this is a good core thread that I thought was really interesting and kind of got speaking about what I was kind of thinking about a few weeks ago about my kind of going out habits and how I want to kind of change things around. And, you know, and it also kind of got me thinking about the stuff that I want to do in terms of being financially independent. I have my own business. And so like, you have to kind of make some sacrifices here and there. I mean, DJing, you have to kind of be a little bit um, stricter with how you spend your kind of free time. Uh, so my crisis confidence came in terms of just like realizing that maybe all these kind of local club nights I'm going to that don't really have a high production value that, you know, essentially uh, what I used to do back in the day with the night so special I used to run in, um, or I used to co-run in the Alibi uh, a long time ago. It's just, you know, you kind of making a flower online, getting booking some DJs, paying the money and then getting them to play in the bar that you're playing in, right? Or the bar that you kind of quote unquote hired for the night. So there's not much kind of effort that goes into those kind of nights, right? And the usually the DJs you're getting are kind of up and coming. They're not really, you know, of that level that you'd kind of want to maybe go out your way to go see. But when you go to like an actually, and then plus add the caveat onto it, I'm actually aspiring to DJ, be a DJ myself, right? In that regard, have that kind of be one of the kind of um, tools in my arsenal. So with that, you kind of, because you're exposed to that in that regard, you kind of want to go to a night and get inspired and get motivated. You don't want to go somewhere and be like, oh, I could play much better than this right that's not the kind of feeling you want you want to go somewhere and feel as if the person is showing you just how far away you are from that level right so that you've got something to aim for you don't want to go to a nightclub and just feel like oh this guy's this guy or girl is horrible so i'm thinking you know what maybe i should be spending more of my money going to the actual expensive production field club nights like the stuff that crank brothers do the stuff that secret sundays do the stuff that um you know world unknown do the stuff that body hammer do like actual nights that i put on that are actually you know high production value or the stuff even that fold where there's always kind of big lineup djs playing go to that instead of going to like the local club things because that's that's where the kind of real vibes are so with that this thread kind of got to the heart of it and really spoke to me in that regard and i think it's something that i hopefully if some of you guys will probably uh identify with as well in some regards so this is a friend on this techno subreddit it's titled the berlin scene kind of ruined it uh, everything else for me and it's kind of very very eye-opening i thought in that regard um let's read it so it says the following i don't want to sound snobby or elitist but after going to berlin more than 10 times over the past years the last time being this summer for three months i'm having a hard time enjoying myself in other places it's very difficult for me to not to create expectations when i go to other cities hoping that the parties will be remotely comparable to berlin but it's almost never the case which is very true I think you have to kind of be aware of it where once you go that this is good. this is just like an anomaly. It doesn't exist. Even in Germany, there's no other city in Germany that's similar to Berlin. It's just weird kind of like place on its own. It's kind of caught, it's kind of caught in a time warp. It's a bit, you know, stuck in the past in that regard, how they go and how they act, how they kind of maneuver around the city, their views around work-life balance. Like just in general, everything is very, very different from any place that you'd be, especially in most metropolitan cities. So that's the thing you have to kind of get over really quickly because you start tapping into it like, well, I could live here forever. But again, I think it's a place that you go for a bit or maybe for a while, then you kind of go somewhere else. Or maybe it's a place that you go to when you're more, a bit more mature and you kind of more know where to kind of settle down, right? But anyway, it continues. I'm in Amsterdam right now and I was so excited to go to the school and shelter this past weekend. However, my experiences in these clubs were extremely lackluster. The clubs themselves were cool, but the crowd was just extremely boring. I thought Amsterdam was supposed to have the second best scene in Europe after Berlin, maybe competing only after London, but again, when you put something on a pedestal and you go there, you know, it's always never the same. To be fair, the school this past Friday was having more of a house disco night. However, I was expecting an interesting mixed crowd, but it wasn't the case. It was just a bunch of young, white, straight guys and girls not even dancing much, hanging out in circles and chatting all the time. Some of them, of course, didn't respect the no photos policy. No crazy outfits, no one dancing their asses off. Everyone was very uptight and reserved. Seeing the toilet stalls vacant all the time without queues is very weird to me. Now, haha, don't even get me started on shelter. The crowd was even worse. They could, I couldn't stay there for two hours music was good though so that's 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 essentially london usually in on any given night you're gonna get great djs you're gonna get great lineups you're gonna get essentially great programming right but it's just the clubs and the people that you're just it's always a toss-up because london unfortunately with all the licensing laws regulations and all the cutbacks clubs just can't afford to turn people away they just can't they have to let as many people as they can into their clubs so if you let everyone into your clubs because it's gonna happen you know 
you're gonna let some fraff in. It's just it's just a numbers game. So when the fraff come into the nightclubs, they essentially are more of a they essentially dictate more of the vibe than anyone else in a nightclub. They dictate all of it. It's they are responsible for how shit a nightclub is all the time. It's very, very interesting. I've I've noticed and I guess that's what makes me appreciate Berlin because what they do in Berlin is that of course they switch to they there's not much of a focus on DJs really because you know for the most part DJs play for like more than three hours so you're not exactly going there just to see someone play right because in London you're going you might go to see a DJ play because he's only gonna play for an hour and a half so you have to really be there from the beginning to end but you can rock up in the middle of someone's six hour set it doesn't really matter right you're still gonna get a good idea of how good they are or not or how much you like them or not right so most of the emphasis has been switched around to the actual people inside the club or the club itself. That's why they go over the top with all the excess. You know, look at that club like CC Foss, right? So CC Foss in um, Berlin is a good example of it. Bar Twenty Five is gone now, but CC Foss is a good is a good is a good example. CC Foss Club is a really good example of it, of just how crazy looking it looks, right? So this is CC Foss in Berlin, where they just kind of go over the top with the interior and add all these kind of extra nonsenses in there, which you know, for the most part, some people like, some people don't like. But I'll show you what it looks like, right? This is CC Foss in Berlin. This is why they do it, because there's a more emphasis on an actual club. So you go in there for a nightclub, you don't really care who's actually playing ZT Force, but it's going to be a good night. It's all kind of laid out really cool. It's a kind of circus vibe, similar to kind of Bar 25. Loads of weird haberdash around. No real rhyme or reason around some of the interior design. It's just with the way it is, right? It's all kind of all over the place. And then you kind of look at a place like Cater Blue, which is another good example, right? In Berlin too. Similar sort of vibe. Very kind of, you know haberdashery stuck together pieces and bits and pieces all kind of molded together so you kind of go somewhere like this not because you know ricardo Villob is going to play there but because it just looks like a cool venue and it's open until eight o'clock in the morning right that's kind of what they've done really great at so with that you're going to make sure the people that are in there are a1 so that's the one thing you get about london great lineups but in, and unfortunately the people that go in the clubs are just Maybe it's the education. Maybe it's the fact that lights and laws are where they are. Maybe it's the kind of culture of, you know, getting fucked up before you go to a nightclub. Like, for instance, with a burger and me going beginning of October, right? I just cannot. I cannot afford to be hung up. I cannot afford to be drunk at a burger. I just can't afford to be drunk. I can't. If I want to go in and I want to be successful getting in there, I have to be completely stone cold sober. So I'm going to get in. I'm going to go to the burger. Well, I have to be... Um, I have to not be high, essentially, right? I'll go to the fucking burger at, what, 1 a.m., right? maybe with a couple of beers in me that I've kind of had on the way there and that's it right and which is completely opposite of what I do in London right you go to a nightclub and you're hammered by the time you get in because you don't want to spend too much money on drinks but in Berlin you've got the added benefit of low ticket entry prices low drink prices everything is kind of set up for you to kind of have a really long uh night out pace yourself in a really good way and that's something you'd learn a lot when you get there right you start you start going hard the first couple of times I went there but then you realize oh no you have to pace yourself out in Berlin Anyway, let's continue his article. It's really cool, this guy, what he wrote, right? Um, so he continues here. He says, um, I think I reached a point where um, going so, so solely for the music or Pacific DJ I want to see just doesn't cut it for me. I think a good crowd is 8% of the experience. So that's what I said. A, a good, the crowd is maybe 90% of the experience. The DJs help, don't get me wrong, but the crowd is... If You know what's a good crowd in London? Actually, taking that back to talking about Berlin too much. The best place I've seen where it's actually a fucking amazing crowd is Boosie Building. Um um in peckham that crowd especially for the soul train night is so app so cool it's so nice it's fucking awesome i love it there that's one of my favorite places to go to but in, in um in london to kind of have an actual good neutral night out it's so much fun honestly i implore you to go it's so fun it's really really fun i really really like it um so yeah that's that's where it's only the best place but again that's probably more to do with the area Peckham's probably got a bit more of a mature it's, it's a lot more of a it's more of a eclectic bunch of people they're a bit more it's a bit more range it's not the same kind of people there's the, the ages are a bit different even I remember going on art tours in South London it was a lot better than the ones I went the the kind of the, the gallery openings in London in East London were a little bit you know the same sort of hipsters going there but in South you get different kind of vibe of people in there so again that kind of works for me um Blah, blah blah. I know. I know that they, they they try putting stickers on phones and having a door policy. 
Fold as well good, does a good job of doing that, actually, to be fair. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to back them up. Um, door policy. The bouncers were asking questions, and I saw a couple of people getting rejected from the school and shelter. But it's still not remotely comparable. I was also in London a few weeks ago. I had a terrible experience at Corsica, where I almost got kicked out of a club. The bouncers came after me in the toilets and searched me for drugs. Luckily, they didn't find that I had. I left 10 minutes later. An absolute mood killer. And will never go back. A club where there's staff watching you all the time is just unthinkable for me now. I think the closest experience to a burn Berlin party was Bassiani, minus the drugs. Also been to clubs, raves and festivals in NYC, in Los Angeles. Blah, blah, blah. I'm not sure what I want to achieve with this post. I guess it's my frustration talking. Maybe I need a break. I love techno with all my heart, but I think it, I should listen to my uh bedroom listen listen to my into my bedroom for a while or better to save my money and go to berlin again than going out frequently and not having fun does anyone else feel the same p.s don't tell me i'm not get yeah exactly the right place yeah i agree i feel the same too i've been there myself my friend and again i just think the best way to deal with it is to kind of understand that unfortunately or unf unfortunately unfortunately berlin is an anomaly it's not the it's not the it's it's the exception right it's not the norm most cities are not like berlin most cities don't you know give nightclubs funds to kind of you know soundproof their buildings so they can you know make sure that they live uh cohabitating really well with their neighbors they don't do that most boroughs you know accept the highest bid get the money in the coffers land their pockets tear down the buildings that actually make the place vibey and you know prosperous and just stick another kind of high-rise building there, right? Berlin works hand-in-hand -hand with clubs. They console, loads of drug awareness programs. It's a completely different culture than anything that we're kind of used to in London here for the most part. So it's anomaly in that regard. But the good thing about it is that it's an anomaly that's fairly easy to get to. It's in If you live in Europe, it's most trips to go to Berlin, even in the peak seasons, are not going to be more than £200 tickets, right? You can plan them in advance and maybe get them under 150 The one I'm going to now in October is about £50, £60 pounds return, right? Crazy prices you can get, especially outside the summer months. You can go if you want to, right? You just have to kind of, um, you kind of have to make the, you kind of have to make the choice of kind of taking away, or, um, taking the coins or taking the funds that you would have spent going to Corsica, going to oval space, going to fabric and put that money into kind of maybe going to festivals and seeing some bigger DJs playing and maybe more of a curated space at Junction 2. One of my best, one of the best festivals I've been to in London, hands down, like maybe the best techno electronic festival I've been to ever. Really amazing, really well done. Great programming, great sound, great organization, just perfect festival. And then spend the other bit of money and go into all the other places that you want to go to. Maybe go and deck mantle, go into Berlin to go visit a couple of times a year. That will probably be a lot more better. And I think if you add actually add up the amount of money you spend going to bars, going to um local nightclubs to go and see Didi's playing venues that you know don't necessarily get the culture, it will probably exceed what you would spend going a couple of trips to Berlin, maybe one in the summer, one in the winter, or maybe three, one in the new year, one in the summer, one in the winter, going to a couple of festivals, right? It'll probably exceed that, I guarantee you. So I guess I would say if if you're out there and you're kind of getting a bit, you know, down with all the whole London stuff, just look at the scenario, what it is. London's great for gigs. It's great for those kind of live shows. It's great for DJs in general too. You can go to some big nights out, but try and go to the ones that are actually put on by big promoters that actually know what they're doing, like the Crank Brother guys, right? And they actually put a good night on, like the Nina Kravitz thing I went to and the Women's so Assembly Hall was absolutely insane, right? They went out, They I'm not sure if they even made any money on that night, right? It was just insane, the level of production that went into it. Then going out to like a local nightclub that doesn't really have good sound. They've got a good DJ in, but the culture does, but they don't really get it, right? The security guys don't get it. The bar staff don't get it. No one really gets what's going on in there. And it's just like a bit of an annoyance and everyone else in there is having fun, but it's just a weird vibe. That's essentially what we see in Berlin. The vibe is the most important thing. But yeah, I've been there. I feel the same. And yeah, the thing that I do is just try and book as many trips as I can to Berlin, man. That's the only thing you can do. Book as many trips as you can to Berlin. Get the fuck out of here and enjoy yourself over there. And then hopefully with that, you can kind of get a bit of an appreciation of what, Be what London has to offer too. London is quite cool in that regard. I think, like I said, every every evening or every weekend you can go and see some of the betty just playing out ever and again it's not it's not it's not berlin it's never going to be berlin but it's you know it is what it is you kind of have to make the best of it i think I've, i'm done with kind of complaining about how shit the berlin how shit the london club nets are compared to like other places i think it's it is a, it's got its unique perks to it i think and again i still maintain you still get the best a range of music genres to listen to in a night out in london than anywhere else in the in europe i think so um i'm just kicking here on resident advisor i'm going to the 18th right the friday and already um you got you know great lineup already you got aphrodite nick castle playing at e1 
You've got um, what else? What else have you got here? You've got Bel Air and George Lai playing at the Jazz Cafe. You've got Perks playing at Cortico Studio. You've got Pete Tong playing at Fabric. You've got Branko and Denga playing at Phonics. You've got Harry Shotter playing at Egg. See, just mad lineups out here that are really fucking good. What's the Zors? No player heard that lineup. Um, you've got Rapture and Cylon playing at Fold. You've got English Disco Lovers at Calf. You've got Pete Rock at XOYO. Come on, man. You know what I mean? you got Francis De La Garde playing at Pickle Factory all night. Mirren Cab playing at Cell 200. CEO. Oh, you've got Cave Imp Knight at Calls. Oh, Joy Oberson, Total Freedom, Zakia, Mamma Mia. You've got Inferno at the Yard, super amazing gay night. You've got Disco Odyssey. You've got Pasha Mama, 4th of Anniversary at Mixed Garage. So I think, you look, you've got Crux at Rye Wax. You've got amazing nights that happen in London. you just got to be a bit more resourceful with your time and go there and kind of know how to kind of use it um, in the right way. But yeah, I, I love London, man. It's not it's not Berlin, don't get me wrong, but Berlin is Berlin because you get to go to Berlin in, in that regard. So I'm not too mad at it at all. What else is on the list here? Ba, 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 ba. We got, what has we got here? We got uh, Bootcamp Woman Told She's Too Fat. Yeah, this is quite sad, actually. I'm not really a fan of this. I, I don't think that's really fair, but it's really kind of a sad story that popped up on the BBC. This woman went to a boot camp or wanted to go to a boot camp, and the trainer told her she was too fat to train at the boot camp that he was kind of starting at that, um, or the boot camp that she was trying to inquire about, which is really unfair. And again, something I don't really understand in that regard, but hey. BBC News article here. Bootcamp woman told she was too fat for classes. Um, a woman told she was too big to join a personal trainer bootcamp has been inundated with messages of support. Uh, Gary Randall, who calls himself Buffmaster, told uh, Lisa Parrott, 33, she was way too heavy <laughs> and he would only help her if she lost five pounds first. Five stone for which is a lot of weight, right? Five stone is no joke. Fucking hell. Well, to be honest, if you're quite big, losing five stone is... Um, uh, what's it? You you losing five stone when you're big to begin with isn't maybe as hard as you probably think it is. It's, it's when you get really fit that it gets really difficult to lose five stone. But still, it's no joke, man. It's not like a well, especially if you haven't been used to losing that kind of weight in general. What's five stone in in kilograms? Thirty kilograms. That's a lot of weight, man. Shit. Mamma mia. What's that in pounds? Sorry, seventy pounds. He wants to lose before he gets to her. Like that's insane. Wow, okay, cool. Uh, Miss Para from Lancashire, who weighs 25 stone, said she was so upset that she started crying and collapsed. <sighs> That's the thing as well, the people that just mean for, for the sake of being mean, right? Why not just be nice, right? That's just out of order, isn't it? Like, there's no need to be that much of a dick to this lady. Like, really, she's really trying to best to kind of change her life, and this is how you want to be. Screenshot of the messages uploaded on Facebook have attracted more than a thousand five hundred comments, including offers of help for personal trainers since they were spotted posted on Sunday. Miss Para and a friend launched a group chat with Mr. Randall to inquire about the services. A reply from Miss Para. His account is here. He said, Hi Lisa, I hope you're well. I've seen your pictures and I'm sorry to say I won't be able to help you. This is what he's saying, right? Only to help you at the boot camp. You're way too heavy now. So I hope you get where you want to be. Fat loss journey in a snap gym. The very best of luck, Buffmaster. Can I ask why that is? So obviously I know you you help people who to lose weight, which is what I'm doing. Yes, I do, but you've got you've gone too far. Sorry. So focus on the gym for at least six months. Then let's see where you're at. So again, this is this is probably the scam he's running with this sort of like um, with this sort of like boot camp stuff. You get people in there that are already quite fit, so that when they post their pictures of them ripped on Facebook, and Instagram, it looks like you're making these people go from fat to fit when really you're not, right? So you get them to send you a picture before they started and when they're at the boot camp, and it makes it look like you took them from that really chubby person to this super ripped, like kind of like you know movie star person. It's not actually the truth. I see it. I see the scam. Clever, clever scam. Um. And, he, and she's asked her, can I ask your reasoning? He says, yes, you're just too big for my boot camp. That's all. If you lose about five stone of fat, I'll be able to help you achieve your goals. And she's like, like, I mean, why am I too big for boot camp? I'm just asking as it will help me to know I'm not picking. Um, just helps me to achieve where I want to go. The sort of training won't suit you at your current weight. So maybe about six months down snap, I might be able to help you. What a fucking cock, in it? Even though my friend is fairly close, it was embarrassing, she said. Um, I was gutted. I collapsed basically. My mum was with me, and she put my arms around me and collapsed into my arms, crying. 
There's a headline here about fat shaming from uh, James Corden. That's annoying, right? James Corden, he annoys the fuck out of me. And he's, a, you know, he's got very womanly tendencies in that regard. And I think, you know, some of his complaints about Bill Maher's fat shaming thing, you know, are a bit annoying. But this is not fat shaming. This is just being cruel. Fat shaming, like taking a piss out of someone because they're a bit fat or like, you know, shaming somebody into maybe losing some weight or, you know, how Bill Maher said, you know, we shame people into like maybe putting the drinks down and not doing too many drugs. We should be able to shame people into like not being fat. But this is not shaming. This is just being cruel. There's no need to say this to somebody. Like she's obviously trying to lose weight. Like the one thing you'll never see somebody doing in a gym is snickering at a fat person ever. I've never seen it in my entire life being in a gym. People are always respectful because they can, they know how much, I know how much effort it takes for me to go to a gym. So I can only imagine how much effort it might take for somebody that's super overweight and very self-conscious, very self-aware about what they look like. Because that's the thing people don't think about. It's like, do you think a fat person doesn't know they're fat? Of course they know they're fat. They just, they just accept what they their, their circumstances just the way some people accept the fact that you know they might have stinky breath or their hair is shit or whatever or their hair they got a like receding hairline you just accept some bits about you but it doesn't mean you're happy with it right so the fact that you're pointing it out and you're being such a cock about it like, this trainer is just not acceptable it's just really really sad it doesn't make any sense um can someone be too big for boot camp uh personal trainer um darren carter who has more than 96 followers on instagram saw the post and offered his help i just wanted to do the well shove it in his face after because i actually felt so for her miss carter said that it's, imp- it's, it's it's not possible to be too big for because of course it's not possible to be too big for a gym even someone was huge it doesn't matter um if someone like that came to a boot camp i would modify the exercise to ensure she feels comfortable because for someone like that to go to a personal trainer, even a boot camp where there are loads of people, it takes a lot of courage. That's what I said. If they come to a boot camp, they should not be rejected like that. Again, absolute cocky way of doing things. Again, I, I just think in general, he was probably looking for a viral moment. He was probably hoping that she would share it and post it out there into, in, into the world for the whole world to see. But again, um, Lisa Parrot, wherever you are, my dear, or Parrot, wherever, whoever you are, my dear, just keep going, man. Um, don't listen to that guy. He's obviously an anomaly in that regard. He's obviously a cock in his own regard. No one else thinks that you're doing the best you can, um, trying to lose the weight that you can lose. And again, this journey is going to be a long one. It's going to be a tough one. It's going to be physically and mentally demanding. The last thing you need is people that are meant to be helping you, adding more stress to the situation. So again, swerve that guy. You don't need to pay more attention to him. And I'm sure she's been offered loads of offers of help from trainers that are probably going to take under the wing, probably do it for free in order to have her as part of their testimonials, do the work and be an example to everyone else. And obviously shove it back in his face, isn't it? Because again, that guy's a dog, dick buff master. What a, just cock master really, isn't it? What a dickhead. But anyway, um, that's it for the show now. I'm going to come back for episode number two or another one later on in the week. So check that out wherever you are. And until then, thanks so much for checking me out. Uh, again, I'm in Berlin at the beginning of the month. So if you're around, check me out. Let me know if you're in the town. Let's hang. Uh, check out my website, stonezinger.com for my details regarding myself. Link in the bio. If it's your first time here via YouTube, give me a like and subscribe. If you're listening via podcast app, give me a five-star review. People can, you know, see the show and all that malarkey. If you want to support me on Patreon, do that too. Link in the show notes. And I'll see you guys another time. Peace out. Take care. Bye. Bye.